Hey guys, um, I thought about the alpha investment video on YouTube and the future of retail, and I do think that uh, the future of retail is not community based uh, in physical community, which the retail stores, of course, are. It is going to be more YouTube. It's going to be more box breaking that, hey, my customers pay me a lot of money to open the box for them. Um, and again, a, a lot of YouTubers, and I would say most of them from Yu-Gi-Oh to Pokemon to Flesh and Blood, they're not opening their own products. They're opening someone else's product. And to clarify that, it's really important for you to understand that when a, uh, a PokeRev, for instance, sells a booster box opening, he doesn't care what you get. I mean, obviously, if you get something cool, that would be nice because then that would promote his future box openings. He's already made his money. Because if he, it's like Logan Paul, for instance, he bought a first edition Pokemon booster box, base booster box for $300,000. He sold just these spots alone. I'm not talking about YouTube ad revenue, sponsor revenue. I'm not talking about his NFTs. I'm not talking about his merch. I'm talking about just the booster packs alone he sold for, I think, 1.3 million. So he made a million clear on selling packs. That booster box didn't go from 300,000 to you know, 1.3 million. Now he's an extreme example, but other examples would include PokeRev, it would be include um, Ruxin34. I love Ruxin's channel, but he's been selling packs and he sells membership so you can have discount on packs so there's even a more level to that. And the same thing with Rudy, right? Rudy, when he opened boxes, it's not his boxes he's opening. I hope you realize that it's a Patreon box. Rudy would be a madman to open those boxes on his own behalf because he understands the majority of these things, if I were to resell them, I mean, what's Rudy? What did Rudy come in as? He came in as an eBay seller for singles, right? During Battle for Zendikar, he was selling the singles. He would do mass box openings and sell the singles. Out of everyone who knows how difficult it is to sell singles, Rudy Chan's probably the most, on YouTube, probably the, the one guy who understands it is very difficult to sell singles on eBay. You have returns, you have lost mail, you have all types of things that can go wrong. Conditioning issues, right? Angry customers for no reason. So, but selling sealed is a little bit better because, you know, A, um, it's kind of a, a fungible item, if you will. So it's multiple of the same sealed item. So you don't have to catalog different inventory, right? So if I were to have a thousand different cards, that would be difficult. I would just type it in. I would just spend hours and hours, if not days, uh, put, posting the listings on eBay. But if I just have a thousand of a box of flesh and blood, Monarch, Unlimited, easy. Post one item and there's a thousand of th those items and now go ahead. Uh, Flesh and Blood is very intriguing to me because there's like a channel and he does a market report on like every set and it, he's honest, you know, I, I give him credit. I mean, he's really invested in Flesh and Blood, but he's honest and it, the thing has gone down. I saw um, one of my uh, subscribers sent me an image of Monarch Unlimited plus like the what I've set at Channel Fireball and they're fire selling the thing for 120 I remember this being like $400. Am I wrong? was like the two set, like was the box price like $200, $300 unlimited? Um, how is it now two for 120? And it's not, Mon it's Monarch or something else. Maybe Crucible or something like that. And I know Monarch is about $60 a box, but I didn't realize the other set had dropped that much as well. I just, I just thought Monarch was a outlier, but it seems like Channel Fireball is trying to, I mean, and this is the organization supposedly holding these massive events. We'll see how massive they are. I think it is overstated how large they will be because people will have to travel to make this event larger than locals. And how many people are gonna spend the money traveling to a flesh and blood event is unknown. So back to the retail thing. It's time to close shop, call it quits, and uh, you know, focus on my NFT company. My website, if you, if you know it's mtgline.com, I didn't even pay for the SSL, which cost $10 <laughs> to pay for, because I, no, I had no reason to run my website during COVID-19 selling, because every time you list something, it triples in price like two days later. Next time you log in, it's all sold out, and you're like, oh, okay, this same dude from London is just, I mean, he's just waiting. He probably has a bot on my website, crawling my website. 
and buying everything I post for like, you know, a good price at the time. The good times, they were good times. I, I don't, I don't, um, I don't want you to come away with the, that it was a bad time. It was a good time. We all made money. We all can get out. We can all get out and with our heads held high and hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. But to continue to gamble, given the way, I mean, sports cards are down, Pokemon cards are down, flesh and blood is down, magic is down. And the one factor I looked at is, and then the whole idea of box openings, I never understood it. So you're telling me for nostalgia purposes, you and 35 random strangers are gonna pay someone to buy a future box, future site, $1,500 to buy a future site box when you can get better cards off, off a time spiral remastered box. What? Like, why don't you just buy a time spiral remaster box? And oh, well, maybe new Frex, they're like, well, why don't you just wait until they have remastered versions of each of these sets? Because they will. You do realize Time Spiral was the first set. It's not going to be a last remaster set. I can tell you that they love reprinting these cards. I tell you that much. Um, what would be the next remaster? I, I mean, I would love original Zendikar or original Ravnica. Original Ravnica would be really cool. Uh, in terms, and then, you know, the OG Shocklands and, you know, I mean, yes, yes, we had Secret Layers and so on, but um, I thought they could do something special with the Shocklands. Dark Confidant is an original Ravnica. Uh, original Ravnica was really fun. And then they obviously they would need to time shift the uh, borders for some of the cards. So why buy a box for $2,000 when eventually a box for 200 will come out, which will blow it out of the water? It makes no sense. Like, and, and this is my whole point about these nostalgic boxes. Um, unless they have reserve list cards in them, and then I could even argue that all they would have to do is reprint the cards without the reserve list. Um, like, let's say Alliance, you know, maybe there are cards on the reserve list, that can, like Lake of the Dead, that don't be re that are not reprinted, but they can reprint Force of Will and people will be happy, right? Now, Teresa Nielsen artwork would be difficult to do because they kind of uh, effed her, but um, that's kind of my concept. I could see them doing alpha and beta and unlimited uh, uh, from the vault or from anthologies. I mean, there's so many different ways for them to say reprint. They would just call it something different like gold version or platinum re reprints. And they might actually have chunks of platinum in them because in the sports card market, that's actually what's happening right now. We have diamonds and gems and platinum. It's all, it's great. It's all fun and games, right? Hi guys.